Hey guys, what's up? It's Code Gamer One here, back with a, another video. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I had a video up today because there hasn't been as many videos and streams on the channel lately. Uh, I do plan on getting back to GTA 4 either tomorrow or Tuesday, but uh, not quite yet. So I wanted to make sure there was at least a video up. Um, but let's get into what the video is about for those that are here just for that. So I'm a huge Destiny player. Uh, I played a ton of Destiny 1, and I played the Destiny 2 beta this week. Uh, I played a little bit on stream. Um, I actually recorded kind of my thoughts during that video, and I was going to put that up uh, during that stream, and I was going to put that up as a video later on, but I figured I could get my thoughts out better in a video where I actually have some notes in front of me to run through and better get my thoughts out. Now, if you haven't tried the beta and you want to try it, they've actually extended the beta for... Um, the open part of the beta, so it's open to anybody, not just pre-orders, uh, until Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So if you haven't tried it and you're on the fence about getting the game or not, I would recommend uh, getting it. Now, let's get into my thoughts. I'm basically done with what I'm going to play at the beta right now. Um, so I feel like I can, um, I can comment with my final thoughts at this point. Uh, my biggest complaint about the beta is the lack of content, and that's... Not necessarily a bad thing, um, but if you compare the Destiny 2 beta to the Destiny 1 beta, the Destiny 1 beta had five or six missions, I don't remember exactly. I think they re they added one or two towards the end. But by the end of the beta, I know it had at least five or six missions. It had one patrol, so you could explore the Cosmodrome on Earth um, and get kind of a taste of what the free roaming part of the game was going to be. Uh, in Destiny 1, it had one strike, it had a PV, I think it had one PvP playlist with a map, maybe two, I want to say there was at least two maps in that playlist. And it had both weapon and level progression, and now that's a big thing, and we'll get into that more as we move forward here. But the Destiny 2 beta, comparing it to the Destiny 1 beta, has one mission, as opposed to five, or, five to six from the Destiny 1 beta. One strike, two PvP playlists, each with one map. Uh, it, it, they have different game modes. One is kind of like Domination from Call of Duty, and one is kind of like Search and Destroy from Call of Duty. It, it's similar. The, uh, the second one is also kind of like the Bomb Defusal mode in Counter-Strike, if you've played that. Um, and there is no weapon or level progression whatsoever. You start at level 20. You're level 20 for the duration of the beta. You can't. Uh, gain any XP or anything and all your weapons are light level 200 so they all have the same power uh, it's just kind of the stats on the weapons are kind of a little bit different and there's different weapon types obviously but they're all level 200 so there's no sense of progression or anything in the in the beta uh, so yeah is the lack of content a bad thing yes and no there's no easy answer for that um, no because it's a beta uh, it gives us a taste of the game, and there's more to see when the full game comes out. Uh, it, it basically spoils less of what's going to be in the actual game. For players like me that played Destiny 1, it's actually a good thing, even though I'm kind of disappointed that there's not more to play. Uh, it makes me more excited for the actual game. Uh, but it is a bad thing, because new players don't know what the full game's going to hold, especially with no weapon or level progression whatsoever. That's a big part of the game. Um, and it's completely missing from the beta, and that's something that you can't even get a taste of in the beta. Um, now, there was a new social space in the beta today. Uh, I didn't get a chance to play it personally because it was only on for an hour, and I didn't have a chance to hop on at that point, but I have seen footage on the internet. Um, basically, it's a social space. As what you would expect, there's nothing really to mention there other than it's bigger and it seems like it holds more players but it's basically the tower from destiny one with a reskin and some new secrets to find uh it definitely looks good though um the part where you can look over the ocean that looks absolutely stunning but it's a social space it's kind of what you expect with a social space um my thoughts on pvp from the beta uh, I never really played the Destiny 1 PvP after the Destiny 1 beta. Um, if you go on Destiny 
no, not Destiny. If you go on Bungie.net and you look at my stats, I played zero PvP games in Destiny 1. All of my time was spent on PvE. So I can't really share educated thoughts on this. So I'll spend minimal time. I'm just going to touch on the things that I noticed about it. Uh, pulse rifles seemed a little bit overpowered to me. But other than that, the weapon balancing was... It felt good. Uh, things felt a little bit off, but it felt good. Um, I'm sure the PvP players will share their thoughts on the weapon balancing, and that'll be fixed for the release of the game. And uh, power weapons as well uh, don't seem much use at all. It doesn't really seem... Um, in my few hours that I played the PvP, I think I used my power weapon th eh, three or four times. Uh, in, in, like th in three or four gunfights is what I'm saying. So that's really not a lot at all, um, but it it felt good. I'm just not good at it because I didn't spend much time playing PvP in Destiny 1 because I haven't played it since the beta. So uh, moving on uh, to my PvE thoughts from the beta, which I can give you a much more educated opinion on because that's all I did in Destiny 1. Uh, it feels good, I can say that. The hitboxes are tightened up and the gameplay feels a lot smoother than it did in Destiny 1. Uh, not that it felt bad in Destiny 1, it just feels way better now, which is definitely a plus. Uh, power ammo feels much more scarce. It doesn't seem like it drops uh, much at all. So I, I find myself just trying to save my, my power ammo a lot um, rather than using it. But Bungie has said that this is fixed for the full release already. So uh, I'm kind of just giving my feedback to Bungie, but they've... Uh, probably already fixed that. They've said they already fixed that, so I hope they're not lying. Uh, in the past, they haven't really lied, so I, I don't have any worries about that. Uh, the weapons feel very balanced in P in PvE. Uh, it, I didn't feel like one did a ton more damage than others, but we didn't really have powerful exotic weapons. Uh, the guns are going to feel balanced because they're all the same level. Um, so there's not much you can really say about that. Um, other than they feel balanced in the beta, but they're going to because they're the same level. Uh, Bungie has been hinting that weapons and armor will be tuned for PvP and PvE separately, which would be a huge plus if they actually did that, and I hope they do. Uh, they should do that, because you can't tune the game for both without separating them. Um, one of the big problems in Destiny 1 was they, they tuned the PvE and PvP um, simultaneously. So, a big issue was PvP players would complain about a certain gun, and it would get nerfed. And PvE players that maybe spent uh, hours or days grinding to get a specific gun, uh, and get maybe a couple days of time with that gun to reap the benefits of having it, it gets nerfed to the point where it's basically a gun that you can get in five minutes of grinding or worse than a gun that you can get in five minutes of grinding, which was a big issue. Uh, so hopefully they, they do tune those separately because you can't tune for both and uh, expect it to be balanced in both, basically. Um, the progression system is missing, like I, I noted before. Uh, which makes the game feel very bare, but the progression system would be there in the full game, so I'm not worried about that. Um, I just had a very boring time playing the Destiny 2 beta because of that. Um, it seems like the story will be much better. It feels much more defined from what I saw in the strike and the first mission of the game. Um, and that's basically about it for my PvE thoughts. Uh, now on to my final thoughts on the beta. Uh, I wish there was more to play, but that's fine for players that have played Destiny 1 like I have. Uh, I don't believe it will hook new players, though, which is a, uh, a problem, in my opinion, uh, especially with no progression system. That's going to turn a lot of players off, I think, and they may not even realize that there is a progression system in the game. Uh, that's basically my biggest issue with the beta. Uh, PvE gameplay feels good, as well as PvP, but I can't really compare PvP to Destiny 1. Uh, should you buy the game? Um, there's no real simple answer for that. Um, if you enjoyed Destiny 1, 
you'll enjoy Destiny 2, and I uh, I recommend picking it up. But if you played Destiny 1, I assume you've tried the beta, so you have your own opinion on that. Uh, if you didn't enjoy Destiny 1, try the beta and decide for yourself. Um, and also look at some of the stuff that Bungie has announced for the full game and see if that's something you'd be looking forward to uh, and maybe that maybe that addresses some of the issues you had with Destiny 1. If you didn't play Destiny 1, I would recommend not trying the Destiny 2 beta. Well, I wouldn't recommend not trying it, but I wouldn't use that as your gauging point for whether or not to get Destiny 2. I would say try Destiny 1 uh, and then decide whether or not you want Destiny 2. There's still a good couple months till the game comes out. Uh, the base game for Destiny 1 is fairly cheap. Now I think you can pick it up for about 20, 30 bucks maybe. And the game with all DLC is 50 or $60 now, I believe, if you get it off the Xbox or the PlayStation Store, which is a good price, in my opinion, for a full game with DLC. Um, plus, if you jump into Destiny 1 now, there's much more game to play now than there was at release if you get it with DLC. And it will give you a good idea of what to expect in Destiny 2. Destiny 2 is basically going to be Destiny 1 with a new coat of paint, slight gameplay tuning, and much more to do. Um, so Destiny 1 in its current state would be a good way to help you decide whether or not to get Destiny 2. Um, now moving on, am I still excited for Destiny 2, even though I was disappointed by the beta? And the answer for that is much more straightforward than the last question, and the answer to that is hell yes, I am still excited for Destiny 2. Uh, why am I still excited, even though I didn't enjoy the beta? Uh, the content in the beta showed a, a significant step forward with gameplay and that's a really good thing but what has me excited for destiny 2 uh is more what has been an, uh, what was announced for the full game uh before the beta that wasn't in the beta um hopefully there's some separate pve and pvp balancing uh there's going to be way more content in destiny 2 i'm expecting uh, the file size for Destiny 2, uh, they, that's leaked already. Uh, it leaked months ago. And it's larger than Destiny 1, including all the DLC for that game. So Destiny 2 at launch is going to be bigger than Destiny 1 in its current state. And there's more DLC to come. Um, and a big thing for me is I'll finally be able to do the raids. Uh, with the new guided matches that they've announced for the full game, the raids are finally going to be possible for solo players like me. I played Destiny 1 for the duration of it being out as a solo player. I played with a f with one friend maybe on two or three occasions. That was it. And I put hundreds upon hundreds, if not thousands upon thousands of hours into Destiny 1. And two or three occasions playing with a friend really is not a lot. And you need to have a group of six to play the raids. And there wasn't any kind of matchmaking system. Now they've um, announced guided matches where let's say you have a clan of four or five and you don't quite have that sixth person to play the raid. You can, you can say, hey, we're looking for people in the game actually. Uh, there used to be a website where you could try and find players for it. But now in the game there's actually a system where you can say, hey, we need players and fill that last one or two spots on your clan, uh, solo players can look and be matched in with those clans. So you're not being placed with five other solo players. You're being placed with some people that actually have some cohesiveness. They just needed an extra player or two. Uh, so that's good. Uh, cohesiveness is definitely something that's needed in the raids. Uh, I never got to do one in Destiny 1 because I was a solo player, but I saw footage on YouTube of all the raids so i know what they take um and one of the coolest things about the raids is uh if you're playing it on day one you're pr probably not going to be able to finish it it's something the community over the course of a few days or a week maybe a couple weeks figures out together it's not your one group of six is going to figure it out unless you're the the one group of six that finishes it first but chances are you're not going to be that one group of six so, uh, yep, uh, moving on, uh, Destiny 1 is my favorite game of all time, and I probably put more time into that game than I've put into any other game, and Destiny 2 sounds like it's more of the same, 
uh, but with slightly better gameplay and much, much more content at launch with more coming in DLC, which is good. So I'm extremely excited for Destiny 2. Um, my plan for the game is basically uh, I'm going to do what I did in Destiny 1, where my Titan character is going to be my main. But once I get basically what I want to do with the Titan done before the first DLC, I'm going to create two other characters, uh, a Hunter and a Warlock, and try and max out all three characters and keep that going as the DLCs come out. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm definitely going to put a lot of time into it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Maybe this will help you make a more educated decision on whether or not to get the uh, full game and what to do if you're unsure. Uh, the plan for, for me when Destiny 2 comes out streaming-wise is I'm probably going to be streaming it a lot. Uh, I'm hoping to get GTA 4 and Episodes from Liberty City done before that. And then it's going to be all Destiny 2 for a long time. Uh, and some iRacing stuff on the side as usual. But that's going to do it, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you either tomorrow or Tuesday for another GTA 4 stream. Have a good one, guys.